Can you think of how big and bulky winter gloves are? See if we can remember how to ride this thing. Whoa. How about this? Right, let's get this locked up. Let's get it. Let's have a little ride. Cuss, 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 because I could not remember the last time I went out. It feels like it's been forever. I just thought I need to switch this heated vest back on. So you can tell. You can tell. Right, let's try it again. I don't even know what I'm pressing. Eventually, I might get out. Right, we have power. We're plugged in. I tell you what, I can't be bothered. I cannot be bothered. Right, let's start again. Good morning, YouTube. It's been a hell of a long time. As you can tell, it's just took me about half hour to get out. Last time, when was the last time I was out? I remember making the video for the sat-nav. I remember doing that. And I think we went to see Albi and Escobar. And I think, to be honest, that was the last time. Yeah, so we are what? What are we? 20, 21st, something like that. November, coming up to the end of November. Christmas is descending on us soon. I started to get the Christmas tree up the weekend with Trent. Right. Craig, why are you driving? Like you've only just passed your CBT. Oh, these roads look a bit better. Okay. You can tell I'm unprepared for this. So yeah, so it's been a bit of time since we've been out. I've kind of forgot what to do. I thought I'd try my heated vest this morning. Obviously, that's been a no-go. I don't even know where to switch the thing on. But I'll tell you what, I'm lacking. I'm lacking confidence by the look of these roads. But we've got four degrees. It's not cold, I'm not feeling it. I've got my winter gloves on. So let's have a little chat. Let's have a little November chat about what's happening, what's going on, what shall we talk about first? The website. Okay. So if any of you have seen, if any of you haven't, I've built the new website. And what I did, I built this with Google Sites. And there's a main reason behind using Google Sites. The main reason being, all the previous websites I've built myself, I use Adobe Muse to build them. You know, they all work fine, I know what I'm doing, I've built hundreds and hundreds of websites, so that's not a problem. The main problem though is the amount of mobile technology people view on. And for those out there who build websites, you will know this, for those who don't, you won't. And what you have to do with a website, you build it, it looks brilliant on your computer. But you also need to have a tablet version and a mobile phone version. 
So I build the website, the main one, the desktop, it looks brilliant. I've then got to rebuild that website two more times. So it's compatible with phones, compatible with tablets, and then obviously you do one single update and you've got to update all three platforms. So it becomes a bit of a, a bit of a nightmare. So I decided to go with Google Sites. I use it a lot at work. And the good thing with Google is they've got the auto-responsive format built in. So you just build the site, they do all the work in the background to make it work on mobiles. So much easier. Well, I've only got to update it once. So I thought while well, I'd build the site, I'd put a few more little extra features on there. I've increased and rebuilt the shop with the goods on there. So there's quite a, a good range of items now on our shop. And I've brought everything down, took all the margins off it. So it comes out to the cost price to you. Because I don't need to be making any money from you. I've got a full-time job for that. So there we go, there's our website. I'll put a link up to it if you don't already know it, have a look. I've tried to take an, I've tried taken, I've tried to take the serious side away from the site. I'll put a bit more of what our personality is and our banter. Which is just messing about and so some of the some of the text on the site I think more reflects what we are and how we do and how we see things. And I'm in the wrong lane completely. It's like I'm a brand new rider. I've forgotten everything today. But uh, it's not nice when um, when you're losing your confidence a bit with the condition of the road. You kind of you lose that relaxation. You make yourself a bit tense. So I need to just chill a bit. I'm not going mad, so I don't have to worry about that. But you don't you don't have to go mad to get caught out. Goose! Yeah, goose. Goose has got the Rona. Yep, he's tested positive. He's all Ronaed up. So he's at home. He's a bit poorly at the minute. He's not. He's not as bad as some people have had symptoms, but he's he's not well. He seems to be suffering with the severe tiredness and just you know the the, the general feeling groggy and. Uh, but I think he's got about another another week left before we can be allowed out into civilization. So goosey boy, get better soon, mate. I need someone to talk to at work. I've missed you there. But at least you can say you've had it, so you can get it out of the way. That's one bonus of it, I suppose. No, I haven't even checked out today. I've thought even if the, the camera's running. So we've done website. We've done goose. No, well, we haven't done goose. We've talked about goose. What else have we got? What else have we got to talk about? Oh, I know what we can talk about. Right. Now, every year, me and Motorway do a little winter's cap. I wouldn't say every year. We only did it last year for the first time. But I think it's our new thing. Every year, we're going to do a one-night winter's camp. But obviously, it's going to be nothing, nothing extravagant. You know, we are going to have... We do pick campsites where there's electric hookups, so we can have a heater. And where there's a pub close by, so we can spend most of the day or the evening in the pub, keeping warm. So, me and Motorway are planning to go camping on the 5th of December. Now that's all down to if the lockdown's eased. But I've got a funny feeling it ain't gonna be. And even then, if the lockdown is eased, that's probably not gonna um, allow campsites to open. So I've got a, I've got a high, high good feeling that that ain't gonna happen. Which I suppose motorway is going to be chuffed about. Because I don't think it's something he really wants to do. He's just been roped into it and he knows now. Because we've done it and I've said he's doing it. He's got to do it. But we had a good we had a good time last year. So 5th of December, we're going to try camping at a place called... I can't remember. The Old Bush. The Old Bush? The Old Bush Inn? I think it is in Worcester. 
but it looks a cracking little campsite. I'll put some pictures up. It's a pub, and the back garden to the pub is their little campsite. So you're literally 20 foot away from your tent, you'll be in the pub. Having a nice hot meal. So the plan is we're going to try that 5th of December. Nobody else wants to go. I'm all scared to camp in the winter. Viper might come in his motorhome, and I'll be mentioned that. It might appear. So if you do Elbs, it'll be good to see you there, pal. Right, where's my son, boys? That's it. So that's our little camping trip. Apart from that, we've got nothing else planned, which most people haven't for this side of Christmas. Uh, some people did say, who were local to me, there's a local, the bike shop called Street Bike, and we normally do the charity run every Christmas, where we take toys to the... Birmingham Children's Hospital. There's been no mention on their sites about it happening this year, so I don't think it will be on this year. I don't think there'll be any charity rides. But I did put a video up the other night. A little clip from the video I made uh, back on the last Christmas where I was telling the story about little Lucas, the little guy who had leukaemia. All those rooms up there Probably got the children in for Christmas. Over here, we've got the Birmingham Children's Hospital. So obviously there's a, a lot of very, very sick children in here this Christmas. A few of them will make it home for Christmas. A few of them will probably spend Christmas in here. And I think the sad, sad sad news and sad reality is there's going to be children in there what's not going to make it home at all the feedback he was getting from the nurses it was amazing they couldn't believe how much he was fighting he was doing really really well and then Mark he put a post on his um Facebook page on the 13th of November and what I've done I've actually got what Mark put on his post here so I'll just read this out November the 13th at 11:20 p.m. my beautiful little fighter At 11.20pm, my beautiful little fighter gained his angel wings and died peacefully in my arms, me telling him how much we all loved him. the little clip but basically just saying you know it was the hardest video I had to make to tell his story which it was but it seems to be a lot of people have commented thinking this is a recent video and that I'm talking about I've lost a child so if anybody out there who has watched the clip you know it, it, it wasn't me I you know that didn't happen to me I was telling the story about a friend's little lad and his battle so yeah, I had that many, <laughs> that amount of messages come through, you know, people with condolences. But, you know, thank you all. It's nice to know the support is out there, but no, it didn't happen to me. You know, God bless and, you know, whatever thanks you want to give that it hasn't happened to yourself. Um, so, but I'll pull a link up to that video if anybody hasn't seen it. It's, um, you know, it really is a heart-wrenching story. But he was such a brave little lad, Lucas was. He really was. It's definitely worth hearing his story. And what, you know, some of these kids... Jesus Christ. What some of these kids go through, especially over times like Christmas, you know, and you think there's, peop 
little kids are in these hospitals over Christmas, Christmas Day, you know, they're in there battling these horrific diseases. So, you know, just a thought for them. So I'll put a link to that video up for you. And we've got coming up as well, um, quite soon, um, I don't know if you all heard, well, we did put a post up, we lost a brother. We lost a biker brother a couple of weeks ago, Jack Davies. Um, cracking young lad, he was only 21. You know, full of life, full of everything. Everything you have in front of you at the age of 21. Um, and we lost him to a motorcycle accident back in early November. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into that now. Um, we've got his funeral, as I said, on the 3rd of December. So, I'll probably do some. We're going to have a, a motorcycle escort, so I'll probably have a little bit of footage from them to pay respects to Jack. So, rest in peace, Jack, brother. Rest in peace, mate. Wired high. And I'll put some links up now to his uh, his charity page where he also supported um, Blood Bikers. So, all money there is going to the Blood Bikers in his area. So, sleep tight, brother. Thoughts are with you and your family. You know, we're thinking of you. The memories. And some of the comments, you know, we've had on the Jack Davis Memorial Facebook pages. You know, it's been amazing to hear all the stories. And I think it's been nice for his parents to hear. Hear all his friends talking about him. And all the memories they had. Look at a beautiful sun. Beautiful morning. Obviously, it's 17 minutes past one, because I haven't changed the time on my bike. Crazy Bear did give me the messages last night. I said to him, I forgot how to do it. He remembered how to do it. So he sent me through the instructions. What a beautiful morning it is. Nice and fresh. So I'd better watch out with there's no I'm on the bend here. There's no cars coming behind me. Yeah, let's move on. Let's get into the campsite. And this is a little story here. Um, which I think I will make the title of the little video. What do motor vloggers do when they're not motor vlogging? Private access. What do motor vloggers do when they're not motor vlogging? Well, what do I do when I'm not motor vlogging? So, this little campsite here, I spent Halloween in my caravan. Because since Easter, the wife wanted the bathroom doing. And in Easter, I put this campsite so. The wife and the kids could stop in the caravan while I do the bathroom. The reason being is the wife wanted all the plumbing moving. She wanted the sink on the opposite side of the room and the toilet moving. So I said, right, I need to switch off all the water. And to save having to keep switching it on and off, I said it'd be easier for you to stay in the caravan. I've never been there near actually. I might go left. So that was my plan. Obviously, because of COVID, and all the lockdowns, all the campsites closed, so it kept getting delayed and moved forward. So we managed to get the last week the campsites were open. So I booked, I booked us in and we started doing the bathroom. Now as all of you are probably aware, I'm an IT manager in schools, but the wife thinks I'm a plumber, I'm an electrician, I'm a builder, I'm a plasterer, I'm a tiler, and that I can do it all. Now I don't mind having a go at these things, but you know, but I did stress to her, I'm not, this is not my trade. And I remember the last year, not the last year, sorry, but 14 years ago when we last did the bathroom, I had my brother with me, who is a builder. Um, where do I go? I'm going to go up there. 
So my brother, who was a builder, he did the bathroom with me. So in a week, we did the bathroom. And it looked amazing. Now this time round, I was doing it on my own. I had the father-in-law to help me. I had to completely gut it, move everything. So I made a little video. Each day I was doing it, I did a little diary of what was happening, what I was doing, how far I'd got. Um, I managed to do the bathroom in just over just over three and a half weeks, I would imagine. I think like Iceman out there and Flash, you know, these are professional people. They are plumbers. Oh no, these are proper dirt tracks. I'm doing a bit of uh, Richie Vida here, a bit of off-roading. Yeah, this was not, not the ideal roads to come up. This is my little November adventure. The bike's gonna, oh no, when we've got cars coming down. Anyhow, while we wait for these cars, I'll pay you the footage now of my little daily vlog of me doing my bathroom. I hope you enjoy it, and this is what me, the motor vlogger, does when I'm not motor vlogging. Enjoy. Ooh, let them watch that video while well, I try and get up here without dropping the bike. So this is the bathroom, day one. This is where we are at the minute, just gutting it. Okay, day two. So we've just been gutting all day, stripping out, smoshing the place up. So tomorrow, get that ceiling frame down, get the floor up, get the new plumbing in, and then we can start fitting. Boom, check around. Day three, the floor's up, and the plumbing's been done today. Then we can start boarding. Get that new ceiling up. So the plumbing's in. Got all the plumbing work done. So what we're gonna do now, is get the floor down today and we can start boarding. Get the window in. Floors in. Pasta board starting. Ceilings boarded. Day seven hundred and ninety three. Boarding. Pasta boarding. the board in. Just fill off the little bits tomorrow. Then we can start getting the tiled floor in, get the plastering done, windows in. See you tomorrow. Okay another day, another dollar. We are boarded. Boom shack. So tomorrow, wear the floor, Saturday, plaster the ceiling, and we can start tiling. Boom ding dong. The job done, the floor. So the floor's in. We can start tiling the walls now. So we've got the first wall tiled. There we go. And the skirting board tiles. Plumbing's nearly done. Plastering's done. Toilet's in place for now. It's coming on. 
We have a bath. We have taps. Day 14,765,000. The tiling's done. We're just grouting now. <sighs> what we get in there, next vid will be complete. Oosh. So the bathroom's finished finally. Here's a couple of pictures of what the bathroom was like last time we did it, which was about 13 years ago. So it looked lovely and fresh then, but obviously it dated a bit. So here's the bathroom. There's a shower. There's the toilet. There's the wall art. There's the bathroom cabinet. There's the sink. See Birmingham. Mm -mm. Nice to see a Kurt yesterday on this morning. <clears throat> what have we got going on here? There's a few people gathered here. Is it a road surfacing convention? Seem to have attracted a lot of people, these diggers. Or maybe they've all come out to see me. I'm all thinking, oh, he's finally got out. He's finished his hibernation. Jesus, there is a few people here. So much going on. I know where I am. This is where I wanted to lost the drone. The first time I brought it out. Well, now that's it. That's good. I can't even see any of the junctions. Jesus, these roads are horrendous. I've got to say, not full of confidence this morning at all, and if you can tell, that's slow on going, but I'm not confident on these roads, there's too much mud. And with the sun reflector, I can't tell whether what's just damp and what's mud. So, I'm going to get myself back onto some dry roads. Yeah, so anyhow, that was my bathroom, that's what I've been doing, so I think it's come out alright. 
you know, three and a half weeks, I don't think it's not, it's not too bad for someone who's not, doesn't do that for a trade. I'm actually thinking it's because the wife said, what did I want for Christmas? So I think I might invest in some heated grips. But then again, I have looked at Les's. He's got the RST heated gloves. And he said the heating element goes round, goes round the end of the fingers. And when you're out, and that's the bit what gets cold, is your fingers, not the inside of your hands. So I'm thinking, do I go heated gloves or do I go heated grips? Obviously, heated grips you can have on as long as you want. Obviously, the heated gloves, you're relying on a power, power pack. So, I don't know. I don't know what to do. So, one thing we are thinking of for next year, we have talked about. Obviously, we've got the three new members to the group now. We've got Desmo. We've got Flash. And we've got Lessie. All three cracking guys. And our plan is, if all works out well, next summer... We are going to go back to France. We're going to go deeper south into France. And we are going to visit the place called Orador Seglane. Which is where the village were massacred by a regiment of Nazis went through the town and slaughtered everybody. I thought it was about 640 people. I thought they slaughtered all the kids women, men, everybody in the village and the village um, as a mark of respect they they agreed to never rebuild the village and just leave the village in ruins as it was, so we're going to go and see that um, but yeah we've got three cracking new lads on board so that'll be 12 of us on tour if all goes well I'm feeling positive for summer next year I think you know at the best, we might be where we was this summer. You know, we might be able to just get away. Get away early in the lockdown before it all starts building up and I start locking down again. So, fingers crossed, we all get to do that. But what we're doing on this one, um, we've had a few people asking if they can, they can come along. Um, the answer's no. <laughs> Not as in, <clears throat> no, we don't want you there. What we're doing this time is each night, it's going to be a six day tour, each night is going to be in a different place, we're in a different hotel. So, last year in Normandy, you know, we just rented the one place and we had it as our base. And the problem being, has been finding hotels for 12 people. And it's been an absolute nightmare. So what I had to do, I had the plan, was originally we were going to get the ferry, as we did last year, get the ferry, get the ferry over to France, work our way down to Orador Lane. but the hotels have dictated the route, because we couldn't find hotels with enough rooms. So what we're going to try and do is get the Channel Tunnel. Go and, uh, go and see Dunkirk and work our way down that way. That's what our plan is going to be. And the route we've had to do that is because that's the only hotels I could find what had enough rooms to get all 12 of us in. So the hotels have governed the route. The route to Orador's Lane and the route back. And we're going to try and see on the route back as well. I think I've planned a day free that when we get back up to Normandy we can go and see sword gold and juno beach we never got to see any of those beats on our last tour so we'll be able to go and see those um and i think there was three hotels on the way down to orador sig lane where we booked we had the last rooms there was no rooms left and i think 12 is quite a good i think 12 is a good a good group size one, which I found out from trying to book hotels for the salt, and two, you know, you think of the logistics of everything, even stopping for fuel for twelve, filling up twelve bikes. You know, you, the time you're talking there, stopping to get something to eat if you try and book a restaurant. So obviously, it would be nice to have more people on these tours, but it's 
you know, it, it, beco- it become impossible. It become impossible to manage. And as I said, it becomes something to manage. And you, you know, you don't want to. I think we got it right last year in Normandy. You know, where we said, you know, we were to p- took the pressure off. We'll take it easy. We'll take it each day as it comes. So what we've done with this uh, tour for Normandy, not Normandy, sorry, over Dorset Lane, is we're going to be doing more riding. So every day we're doing about 200 miles to the next destination. So we've increased the mileage to build our endurance a little bit. And originally we was looking at outfits. We wanted to go and see outfits. But outfits, um, when I started looking into it, to outfit some back, it's about 2,100 miles. So if we're basing at the moment, you know, we, we're saying comfortable is 200 miles a day. So to do 200 miles a day, to outfit, you're looking at 10 days there and back. You know, and I don't think, I think between 12 of us trying to book it so we can all get 10 days off. So I think that might be another, that want to be in the future, I think. So why I'm here, actually, I want to talk about these glove techs. I don't know if you can see them. What it is, it's a little sticky adhesive pad. You put it on your finger. I don't know if you can see, I've got it on my finger. And what they do, they allow your phone to be interactive. So you can use it with your gloves on. Now I saw this on Teapot One's Instagram. He bought some. That was 9 99 off Amazon, so I thought it's got to be worth a try. See if they work. Now Teapot did say they worked fine and he's got a screen protector on his phone. But when he put it inside his ultimate add-ons case and he's got that second layer of a screen protector, it didn't really work. So my old iPhone 6 I use near it, my sat nav, has not got a screen protector. So I've only got this one screen on it, which is the, with the phone case. So let's see. Is this phone on? The phone's flat. The phone is flat. Right. Okay. So I can't do that. Right. Where's my phone? Right. So my phone has got a screen protector on it. So let's try it. Let's see if it works. Press the home button. Let's put my code in. And I can say, if you can see, it's not working. They're not doing anything. So I'm wondering, is it the thickness of the glove? Because on my summer gloves, I've put them on, which are nice and thin. It works perfect. So now I've put these big chunky gloves on. It ain't doing nothing. Never mind. It was an easier test to buy and try them instead of going out and spending 70 quid on some gloves which say they work on phones and you find out they don't. So in the summer I'll be able to operate my phone. In the winter with my winter gloves on, I can't. That's that test and trial done. There is something I've kept till last I wanted to mention. Um, you've probably all seen it. You all know of Albie. Ricky's last ride and I'd imagine you've all seen Richie Vida's video but if you didn't I'll put some clips up now I dropped Richie a message last night see if I'm okay to rob a few clips from it and these are some of the clips of when they finally got the blood bike for Ricky's last ride so I'll put these clips up now of Albie doing his thank you speech Thank you. Four years we've been trying to do this. Wow. This is the man that started it all. <laughs> hey mate, you're right. Wow. I'm just sorry. First of all, um, right off the bat, I would like to say thank you so much to everybody for attending today. This day is really special for me and my family. This has been something that's been in the pipeline for well just over four years now it was our son Ricky's dream to uh, to be a blood biker but unfortunately never got to make it um, we lost him um, all those years ago 
So the next best thing was to, to try and fulfill his passion by getting one of these motorbikes and putting it out there to save lives every day for him in his honor. And today is the fruition of all the effort and hard work from everybody that's put their hands in their pockets and contributed. First, I'd like to thank uh, Richie from Wild Bad Channel. He pulled me back from a very dark place many years ago. And uh, he's one of the reasons I'm still here because I found him and it, it gave me that inspiration and that goal to carry on and fulfill this dream for today. So it just goes to show that dreams can come true if you work hard and pursue them. Secondly, um, the guys from Serve. We've got Cameron here, the chairman, guy, operations manager, fleet manager. Tremendous guys, they work tirelessly to save lives every day by keeping these things on the road and by being out there in all weathers, 365 days a year. And not just motorcyclists, but everybody. You may not even know that you've had a family member that might have needed blood from somewhere one day from an operation. You may have needed x-rays sent or platelets or something, anything that could do with saving their lives and these are the guys responsible for it. That's why I'm so proud to wear this jacket and be a part of such a wonderful organisation. Um, it's, it's, and all the, all the Masons as well that are here today, thank you guys for all attending and supporting me. Thank you for the donations that you've helped to put in towards this bike, helped to raise the money for this bike. And to Phil from the BMCF as well for their donations. Thank you so much, Phil, um, for representing the Bucks Masons and everything that you've done for us. It's people like us that like to give something back in life. Um, we take a lot of things and not many of us give back. And when you do, it makes you feel special. And this is my way of doing it, um, by helping those people that I don't even know, but they help, they help me and my family as well. I remember a while back before we lost my dad, he needed 14 pints of blood one night in an operation. And I didn't even know about the blood bikes then, but it was these guys that delivered it. And I didn't even know about the blood bikes until Ricky decided when he came to me and he said, Dad, do you want to help me do something to, to make a difference? And he told me about them and ever since, I've never looked back. I love what I do for them. I love what they do and what they're about. And I'm just so proud, like I said. So without waffling on too much, <clears throat> I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's been over four years and it's finally come true. So thank you everybody and God bless you, Ricky. We did it. Thank you. One last thing I'd like to do is, Guy, if you step forward, please. I know Cameron does all the hard work behind the, <laughs> behind the doors, but um, you're the one that's out there making the difference as well. I know you all do everything, but I'd like to make a small presentation Thank on you, behalf Ron. of Ricky's last ride. Thank you so much. <laughs> God bless you. That's about all I can say, really. Just thank you, everybody, for the support. It means so much to my family, and it's... Wow, I can't believe it. We finally did it. That is all thanks to you guys and that man there. God bless you, Rich. I love you. Thank you, everybody. So. Uh. so there we go, Albert. You did it, mate. You got the bike. So chuffed for you, mate. So proud. I bet Ricky's over the moon. You've done it, mate. I bet he's looking down and he's so proud of his dad. You did it mate, you fulfilled his dream for him. Well done brother, well done. So once again, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little Sunday morning tootle on the bike with me. I've enjoyed it, it felt good. I needed to get out, I was going a bit stir crazy. I kept going up and down that shed, getting tools to the bathroom. I kept seeing the bike and she kept looking at me and saying, Daddy. And I'm not going to say Merry Christmas to everybody yet. So one way or another, I will get out to say a little Christmas message. Probably won't be a Christmas video this year, because obviously we can't all meet up. We can't have our little Christmas do. But we have said, if some kind of a lockdown does happen, sorry, lockdown release does happen, and we can meet up, then we will all meet up and have a little Christmas drink. So until the next one, people, 
road safe, stay safe, be in lockdown safe, and we'll see you all on the next one. Oosh! Right, is she muddy? Actually, that's not too bad. Don't tell me I've been riding all this time with that hanging there. Oh no. That's my lead to charge that. Can't believe I've been riding with that hanging down. Could have got stuck in my brake. I'd imagine it would have just ripped it off, but if that connector got stuck in the caliper. Ooh. Oh, there's some mud down there. Yeah, she's gonna need a wash and chew, but she's not. She's not caked in mud actually. Time for the ACF 50 to start coming out. Right. Let's get this girl back in her bed. Put her here. There we go. See you on the next one, guys. Double oosh.